Divine Truth Feedback Jesus, Mary and others give personal or group feedback to people who have asked for personal assistance. Jesus and Mary give personal feedback to Peter and Eloisa Lytton Hitchens on the issues of arrogance and compliance in relationship. The session was recorded on the 21st of October 2015 in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. This is session one, part two. Hello, welcome again everyone. Uh, we're at the second half of our discussion now with Peter and Eloisa who are with us and this time we're going to, instead of focus on poor Peter who was... <laughs> and I survived. And I don't feel he's poor Peter, I, feel no. he's, I think he's uh, done pretty well and also that he's, uh, it's great being able to discuss openly with you guys these particular things. But what we're going to do now is focus on poor Eloisa. <laughs> no. I don't feel like No, not poor either. <laughs> and uh, and we, we want to talk to him primarily uh, about the reasons why you accept the behaviour we talked about with Peter, why you personally accept this behaviour and don't challenge it. Yes. Because yeah. we, we feel that one of the big problems we see is that inside of a relationship, um, there is a, there's a difference between the acknowledgement and allowance of the fact that we have injuries yes. <clears throat> and the inability for us to talk about these injuries, which is actually denial of injuries rather than allowance of injuries. Yeah. So what, I, what I'm talking about there is that the majority of people believe the best thing to do with your injuries is not discuss them. Yes. Right? Okay. And then those people who don't believe that, who actually believe you should discuss your injuries, they believe that, uh, well, certain things are like taboo, you mm -hmm. shouldn't discuss because it's too upsetting mm -hmm. for the person who you're discussing about. And then there's the whole, the whole issues of enabling each other's behaviour that, yeah. that people don't talk about generally. In other words, what am I doing to enable Mary's bad behaviour and what is Mary doing to enable my bad behaviour, yes. right? <laughs> And, and, you know, this is something we would like to talk about with yourself, Eloisa. Yes. So, so you can easily see the issues we raised with Peter. You can Correct. see that there are times when he's condescending with you. He doesn't acknowledge your feminine traits and qualities. You feel, you know, that he looks down upon certain things like emotion and so forth. And, and when you're expressing a feeling that you know is more connected to God than what he is, he often ignores what you're saying. And you can feel all that and you feel quite sad about it. And mm. even during our discussion a bit, you were crying about it as well, weren't you? So you, you can acknowledge those particular things are there. So you can see yeah. them easy enough. And I'm sure you'd like him to stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. But you're not seeing how you're enabling his behaviour in this regard. Oh, great. And why? Can, and what are the motivations? Yeah. Can you see, can you... Uh, what do you, since, how do you think you do it and why do you think you do it? How and why, yeah, well since you guys have raised it, you've raised this issue with us previously, so uh, a few months ago mm -hmm. or more. We have. Um, and so I've been thinking about that a lot. Yep. Um, because I can see when you pointed it out to me that I'm doing it. But when you first initially did, I didn't even know I was doing it. Yeah. I was in denial of doing it. Yeah. So a few of the reasons why I do it is um, basically my own addictions because with anyone else I'm willing to probably raise these same issues. Oh, maybe not. It depends what type of person they are. It does. It? What type of person? Yes, and it depends how much courage or how much I've, um, like, say, with my dad, mm -hmm. I would now say to him pretty plainly, "You're being really condescending with me, Dad." Yes. Um, whereas with someone else, I don't recognise it with some other men. So mm -hmm. I'm beginning to feel that I've got a bit of an addiction to still avoiding men's rage. Like I haven't fully, or it's not even that. It's more like what I want to avoid in Pete is is then what he gives back to me. So I don't want him to... Can you to, explain what you mean um, by that? Yeah, I don't, I don't want to feel responsible for his feelings and whatever those are. Mm -hmm. And I suppose particularly sadness. Can I ask you, though, why you do feel responsible for his feelings? You say you don't want to feel responsible for his feelings, but, but the reality is... But I do feel is, responsible for his feelings. You do feel responsible. Feelings. I feel like I've upset him and I feel like I have done something wrong. Even when you've done something right. Yes. And even say with, you know, like that's what we were saying when we were talking to Pete, is like I feel like I do have all these problems and that I am responsible for his, even though like his sexual um, issues because... And I, so I agree with that <coughs> with him, that I'm responsible. I agree that there are times when, you know, Pete does make you feel like you are responsible. Yeah. He, he does 
feel that you are. But sometimes I don't think you do. I, don't I agree. Know. Sometimes so, you take on responsibility. When it's not there. When it's not there. And why do you take on responsibility? Well, I question. feel that that's an injury with my own dad. Right. And that I feel, like, I, I feel that basically I was um, with both my parents, actually. That, one, it was a, an addiction to get away from stuff because if I took on that everything's my fault, then I didn't have to necessarily deal with, um, like, they kind of agreed. They're like, yep, it is yours. And then things were a bit smoother. Right. And what would have happened if you didn't? Um, or what, do you, what, do you, what did you want to avoid? I wanted to avoid their anger and their, like... I, so I what feeling in you did you want to avoid? That so I the was... blaming of yourself is actually to avoid another feeling. Yes, all right. I want to avoid that somehow I'm I am to blame or I'm wrong, like that mm. I'm unlovable b- because I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to avoid. We feel you have a need to need to have a good feel about yeah. that one. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, I I feel we've got to be careful here about <clears throat> talking to you guys too much without you engaging some yeah. personal reflection about what's the cause of these particular emotions. Yeah. But that is a big issue for you, Eloise. Huge. Right? So. Yeah. yeah. All right. <clears throat> Relates, can I give her a hint? <laughs> fear. It okay. relates to fear. You All prefer right. the feelings of responsibility, self blame, self attack than the experience of fear. All right, then I've got to find out what I'm fearing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You don't want to feel the feeling of fear. Yes. Any, yeah, I agree. I don't no. really want to feel any kind of fear. Yeah. So you also don't want to feel the feeling of low self worth. Yeah. Whenever somebody blames you, you avoid the feeling of low self-worth by blaming yourself. Because if I have mm. to feel that they, if I can say, yeah, I am bad, then I don't actually have to feel how bad I feel. Yeah. Is that correct? You're actually yeah. avoiding the feeling of it, ironically. Yeah, that's so, yeah. You're kind of yeah. living in the feeling. You're living in the feeling yeah. rather than avoiding it. You're repeating that right. as a message yeah. rather than just grieving it as a feeling. Yes. You, yeah. don't want to, you don't want to feel the sadness that that makes you feel. No. About yourself. Right. Yeah. But let's discuss uh, the three primary things, isn't it, yeah. that we yeah. have raised here as the reasons why you accept Peter's, cool. Peter's arrogant position at times. Yep. Well, the first thing is probably the, the reason why, and then the other two things are things that happen as a result of you okay. accepting those feelings. So yep. the first thing is really what we've just been talking about is that there's an addiction in play yes. to blaming yourself in order to avoid conflict with Pete. Agreed. Yeah. Yep. So you prefer just to so agree with him. Yeah. Go ahead. So when you're in conflict, what is it that you feel? Depends what the conflict's about. Well, no, I don't no. think it does much, actually. Okay. <laughs> right. Let me think about Whenever it. you enter a conflict with pretty much anybody, but in particular with a man, there's something that go, there's feelings inside of you that start coming up that you want to avoid. Big time. Okay. Big time. So I can identify the surface <coughs> things if it's like, oh, I feel it's unfair and a blame and I don't want to be blamed anymore. Are there other things you do to, to create the conflict? Fear. To create the conflict. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. To avoid the, <laughs> to avoid the feelings that you actually feel. Yeah. Um, what do I feel? I feel sad, I think. You do, mm-hmm. but what is it about? So you've got a man, you've got a man telling you that you, you know, that you're no good, and you, just, you know, you're not as good as he is, and you need to improve. And I just feel like I'm kind of nothing, like, and that, yeah, I'm pretty much zero. In whose? In my, my, in men's eyes, like I'm worthless in their eyes, maybe. Is it in their eyes? In my eyes too. I don't think I'm worth much. Yeah, well, this is what you've got to... (laughs) Oh, you're going to struggling. I'm struggling. I can Um, feel I'm sad. I just don't know what I'm sad about. Yes, I agree. Yeah, I agree with that. But I also feel there's something that you're really skipping over and you're almost in the addiction of self-blame as you're talking about this. As I'm doing it. So can I ask you a couple of questions? Yes, please. Uh, I feel that what you're starting to feel is a feeling you have to feel, but there's another aspect to it, if you like, that yeah. I feel you're skipping over. Yeah. So first question, 
what happens, what does Pete project when you have a conflict? What are some of the things that happen that come from Pete? Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know anything. Um, so condescension. Condescension. I'm kind of less. Yeah. So superiority. Yeah, superiority. <coughs> um, I don't really have any experience, so what would I know? Yeah, so, so it's more worldly superiority. Yeah. 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 What about when Pete withdraws? What the feeling is going on there? Oh, I'm terrified then. What, yes. what, and what, oh, what, what, what is what, the feeling? Of um, when he withdraws, what's the feeling? I go into panic, which is to avoid the fear um, that I've done something wrong at first, and then. Well, no, no. When Pete withdraws, he's punishing you. Yeah, he's been. It's passive a purposeful, aggressive. passive aggressive method of punishing you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Have you not thought that? Um, I didn't think it was punishing. I just thought I just thought I'd done something wrong. So, so I'm this going is where this addiction the punishment. is. This is a big addiction for me. Um, yeah. Okay. What a feeling. What I want to point out to you, Ello, is that often you go, you go straight into self blame yeah. rather than connecting to the feeling coming from the man and what you're afraid of in the man or from the man. And yeah. so you, you're more comfortable just to say, this is all my fault, this is terrible, I'm bad and worthless, than you are... And can I extend that a bit before you say, go? Yeah, go. It, you're so comfortable yeah. that it's your way of actually mitigating the circumstances. Yeah. Your, your method of manipulating the man in this situation is to agree with him. R right. So then I no longer challenge her or no longer have the... Well, then you come back. I, well, you want I'm feeling like I've, I've won, basically. Well, you, that's wants, what you get. Yeah, but what we're what focusing it, on yeah. is what Eloisa gets. She wants something to change in the emotional environment. So she does something emotionally. Which is blame herself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In order to avoid the bigger fear, which is relating to the dynamic with a man. Is it like, it, like kind of rejection or something? Well, Peter's punishing you. When he, when he withdraws from you, yeah. he's punishing you. Yeah. You hate it. Yeah, I do. Why do you hate you getting punished? See, see when Peter withdraws from you, mm. that's unloving behaviour. Yeah. He's the one at fault, not you. Yeah, except, yeah, okay. And but I'm you don't see it that addiction. way. No. You see it like you're the one at fault. You did something wrong. So what am I really? Like when Mary, when Mary challenges me on something, I don't withdraw from her. I don't run away and say, I'm not talking to you anymore. I don't go out working all day, right? I sit down and engage in the discussion. And he also doesn't get moody. Yeah. No. Yeah. Or overtly angry or passive aggressive or, 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 or condescending. Or condescending. condescending. Now, these are all methods that Pete employs. To yeah. punish you. To punish you. But you don't want to feel about that. No. In fact, you want to enter another addiction in order to not feel about that. So he punishes yeah. you and then you go, yeah, punish me, punish me. I'm to blame. <laughs> but I don't like And we're asking you punished. why you do it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like being punished so much that you don't want to feel that you're being punished. Correct. Like you I, punish yourself. You punish, you'd rather punish yourself. Yeah. Well, I was in total denial that I was being punished. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I agree. <laughs> you don't want to <laughs> feel the real dynamic. God's truth about the issue you don't want to see. I don't deserve the punishment. You don't. That is true. But why do and I... Peter is punishing you, which is an indication of his condition of love, not yours. Yeah. So that's also true. A person who punishes another is an indication of their condition, the person who's doing the punishing, not the condition of the person receiving the punishment. God doesn't punish anybody for any error. Right? God has penalties associated with the law being broken, but not punishment. It's not punitive. It's redemptive and educational. Yeah. So, so the only time I would step away from Mary is to educate her, yeah. not to punish her. Yeah, and I'm not getting educated because I'm no, just going not. into my little <laughs> cycle of... And one of the, the only times I've stepped away from Mary in a conversation, I, I've said the thing five times already. She hasn't heard what I've said. And, then, and I'm saying, baby, I'm not saying anymore now. You, you need to sit with what I said. You know, yeah. and I'll or, step away then. But, or but it's in not, the early But it's not punitive. Yeah. No. It's not like you're a bad girl now and I'm going <laughs> to not talk to you for, for a week. And, you know, that's punitive. That, that's not loving. No. Right? Peter's engaging in punitive behaviour towards yourself in order to punish you 
for something that he's avoiding feeling in himself, right? So we've established that. That's the reason why he does it. But what we're saying to you is you accept it all and you punish yourself and you go, yeah, you're in agreement. Yeah, punish me, punish me, punish me is what you're doing. You're going, punish me, punish me. Which means I must have like one massive fear to put up with that and think it's okay. Eloisa, you don't even... I don't even... You're so in the addiction, you don't even (laughs) notice that the dynamic has happened. No. And you don't even see his behaviour as unloving. You you think he's right and there's something wrong with you. Yeah. Right. And you prefer to think it that way. I gr- I can feel it. I prefer it. Yeah. yeah. I just so you're pretty scared of something, aren't you? Yeah. Otherwise you wouldn't do it, right? And I can feel this, but I don't know what this is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So something to work on, valuing God's truth rather than your addiction. Yeah. <laughs> Saying, no, hang on, what is the truth? And So can we just highlight the addiction for you? Yes, please. The addiction is? Self-punishment. Yeah. Yeah. You get to avoid something. Yep. And you want to know what it is that you get to avoid. Yeah. Because, it, because, that, because that obviously is more important to you to not feel that than it is to punish yourself. You'd prefer punishment of yourself yep. than, to, than to feel the, this particular feeling, whatever this feeling is, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Mm. So what I feel is that you don't want to be sensitive to the man's emotions towards you. Yeah. You prefer... It's and, almost, and can we say, what, and what that makes her feel. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. You, you don't want to feel what you feel when you are sensitive to those projections. You go straight into an addiction, which is kind of agreeing with their projections, yeah. but it, you avoid being actually sensitive because you impose it upon yourself. You're trying to agree with him and placate him, basically, yeah. which is not honouring God's truth about the dynamic mm-hmm. and where both of you are in relation to truth from God's perspective. Mm-hmm. You're treating yourself very unlovingly. Yeah. And you're doing it to avoid the fear. And the feeling actually does come from Pete when I do Of course. This. Okay. Of course it cool. does. Mm. Yeah. And you, so it's a feeling you, you have learnt from a very young age to engage this kind of behaviour with anybody who projects that kind of emotion at you. All right. Great. Particularly anyone you value. Yeah. Okay. Who projects that emotion at you. The reason why you have less difficulty speaking truth to people who you don't know is because they're not people who are in your personal life who you are trying to live with on a day-to-day basis. I'm not invested in them. You're not invested so much in them, and so you're more open to telling them the truth. Yes. You're also less open to punishing yourself as a result of what they project at you. You don't blame yourself as much. But when it comes to your personal relationships with dad, mum, sister, brother, partner, partner, and your children, mm-hmm. yes, and your grandparents and your children, right, yeah. uh, and Peter's parents as well. Anybody who's close in your circle, yeah. if they project this group of emotions at you, your response is a very, very strong yeah. and in unconsidered response. Yeah. It's an automatic thing. So you know this has to be an addiction. Yeah. It's automatic. Bang! I'm in it straight away. No thought. No. No consideration about even what's being, if is what being said to me, is that even God's truth or is it truth at all? There's no consideration of that even. You're no. straight away in it, bang, blaming yourself. So there's got to be a pretty strong motivation. Yeah, I agree. For so you to do that. When you started talking to me, that first crying, was that the punishment crying? Was there any real crying in that or has it all been self-punishment? No, you start, you see, when, we, when we discuss the emotion with you, it. you start to feel a little of the sadness, right? Yeah. Of, of what it feels like to be in this situation. And I, I suggest you feel more of it. Yeah. But, but you still don't know what it is yet. Agreed. Agreed? Agreed. You've got no idea what it is that you're trying to prevent. No. Now, what we want to try to do <laughs> in this discussion is help you see what's coming at you yeah. so that you can see what you're trying to avoid. Yeah, and, it's, I will... and then you might be able to feel why it is you're trying to avoid Correct. it. Correct. Because it's the feeling it? in me that I'm not aware of. I can, oh no, I'm not aware of what's, I'm still not wanting to feel, be aware of the projection either. Correct. No. You, you, don't. Don't. you don't. You're instantly, you, like this is what happens in a dynamic. Yeah. You get a projection. 
Yep. It's one of these groups of projections which is about really Eloise is to blame. Eloise is, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna punish her. Yep. Yep. I'm gonna punish Eloise. And, and as soon as you get that particular emotional feeling from somebody who you feel is important in your life, you instantly revert yep. to self judgment and punishment. And you don't even feel, oh, they just projected that at me. You don't no, even you don't feel even want to be that aware what they that projected at you was right or wrong you, or was valid or not valid. You know, it, it matters not to you whether it was valid or not even valid. Like sometimes Peter might say, no, this, what he says is might, might actually be true. But yeah. you don't even evaluate that. It, no. like sometimes what he says is completely wrong. You don't even evaluate it. No. Right? You're instantly in the addiction of avoidance of something through <laughs> this particular feeling <laughs> of, punishment. of punishment and self-blame. Yeah. Instant. Okay, right? <laughs> and you've done this even with your own children. This is why your children gained a lot of control over you, particularly your male children gained a lot of control over you when they were first born or shortly after. Yeah. Because of these kind of things that you're trying to make go away. You, they just had to project a feeling at you. Just a feeling. So and you would start feeling like Even before bad. they could Spirits talk. Would do it. Yeah, yeah. Or would they do it too? They'd do it. Wow. Mm. That's pretty full <laughs> on. <laughs> and you're instantly in this self punishment, blame, I'm a terrible mother, blah, 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 blah. Off you yeah. Go. And that's, that's sometimes what I'm like, God, why did I do that for? I still don't even know. Yeah. All right. And you've started to be sensitive now to how bad it feels to live in self-punishment all the time. <laughs> Which so that, is that's good. a very good thing. You're just starting to feel the sin of it, if you like. Yeah, you I know. just don't know what the sin is. <laughs> well, it's well quite, can I explain the sin? The sin is quite obvious. You're not loving yourself. Yeah. Okay. So that's the, that's the thing that God's trying to help, help you work through. That's yeah. why the self-punishment hurts so much. Mm. Yes, yes. But it's Sorry. why do I not want to? Like, yeah, what is it that makes me... Okay. What yeah. don't you want to feel that makes you choose self-punishment? Yeah. That's the question, isn't know. it? Yeah. Yeah. And this is how you allow behaviour towards yourself that is unloving. Yeah. Because you automatically revert. You want to prevent a certain feeling inside of yourself. Yeah, I do. And instead, you prefer punishment of yourself yeah. or blame of yourself. Yeah. It doesn't. What does blame of yourself accomplish? Can I ask you that? Oh, uh, like nothing. No, that's Just, not true. It, oh, you no, never okay. do anything for no reason. No, okay. <laughs> when I say it, blame, it doesn't. When I say that, it never gets me at anywhere further than what I'm at. What it does is it gets me away from having to feel whatever I'm trying to avoid feeling. Ah, uh, no. Before then, it even accomplishes some other things. Yeah. Before anything about you. What does it accomplish? Oh, it, get, it actually gets the person to stop doing what they're doing to me. Correct. Yeah. That's and your that's motivation. It is. I just want them to stop. You want them to stop. Yeah. Your, your reversion to self-punishment and self-blame is a learned response trying to get the other person to stop. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's a manipulation of the other person, actually. Correct. I agree. <laughs> right? I agree. So, so that's where it begins. That's, that's, and sure, the other mention you mentioned is, is there too, but, but this is the primary thing. Yeah. You, it's yeah. a method of stopping what's coming at you. Yeah. yeah. Right? And this is why you engage it immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I, so I it's don't a learned response it. from your childhood yeah. and you engage it immediately. Yeah. So, so what we've got to do is find out for you, we've got to find out the reason why yes. that particular behaviour is engaged in the beginning. Yep. And the underlying emotion that you are to trying to avoid by engaging this behaviour. Yeah, and I'm trying to avoid it, something chronic. Yeah. Because I'm just like, blank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But no idea. Yeah. Okay, well let's... So, sorry. Go on. You need to grow the will. To find out. To challenge the addiction. Right. And stay and not punish myself. Mm. Seek God's truth, not punish self. Find it. You're going to find that emotion pretty quick. <laughs> but but you're going to be so tempted to punish yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, already, I'm already punishing before I like even think I about it. I know. Even when we asked you, what do you feel? You started saying, well, I just feel bad. I just feel worthless. Now, see, that to me is just straight in. That's straight into Correct. it's all about me and I'm wrong and bad. 
yeah, when actually... Okay. Not wrong and bad. <laughs> if I wasn't wrong and bad, what would I be feeling? Yeah. <laughs> there are times where you are wrong and bad. <laughs> yeah. But it's not punishing, the does problem, it? The problem is, is that you don't know when that is. Correct. <laughs> you think it's all the time somebody projects this group of emotions at you. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Huh? yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes other people are going to be off mm-hmm. base. And if you just accept the truth, Yes. Like if I just started projecting at you, you were on a bad Eloisa, you'd believe it. <laughs> we don't want that. <laughs> I don't want you to do that. <laughs> we want you to be able to analyse it from God's perspective and go, am I wrong and bad or am I not? Or is Mary just having a I mean, go at me? Yeah, and yeah. I can't actually tell. You can't. I yeah. have to say, and I often hook in even with lovely people and go, you do? Oh, maybe they feel that about me even when they don't. No, so, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's look at some of the feelings you're so w- w- avoiding from the person. Shall we? All right. Yep. Is that what we were going? Oh well, we we're actually going to talk about the effect that it has upon you. Oh, okay. that whole dynamic we just talked about. Yeah. So, can you do that without me knowing? What it is? <laughs> is that go with what you want to talk no, about? No, 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 no. Yeah. That's fine. Is that right? Yeah, I'm happy to talk about yeah. it like, from that perspective. Yeah. You're looking at me quizzically. Yeah, <laughs> you are looking quizzically. <laughs> um, so, we don't have to be bound by our notes. So what is there? What, what, how does it affect you? Well, I, I feel firstly, no, I feel what I was putting forward yeah, is go for the it. way to go first. Go for it. Because before you know how it affects you, you've got to know what's coming at you. Yeah. You okay. see what I'm saying? And I'd yeah, like you to know what's coming at you. Yeah. You're not okay. you're not at this stage truthfully acknowledging what emotions are actually coming at you. No. Right? Now if you if you don't truthfully acknowledge the emotions coming at you, how can you ever like get down below and wh- what do you do as a result of it or anything? Well, like I that? can't. <clears throat> mm. So I feel you need to firstly go through this yeah. concept of what's truthfully coming at you. What what is it that that is happening? Yep. To you. In your relationship. In your relationship. Yep. That other people are doing to you. Right. That, that you feel from them that's coming at you that you're avoiding feeling. Okay. Do you follow me? Yeah. Yeah. The, I'm going to find this really hard. The and truth of what's coming at you is what we're after. Yeah. And, the, and I, know this is, I, I know this is what I've avoided. Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just want to avoid anything coming at me. Like, when I say projections, a lot, of, like a lot of people. I want to avoid what the feelings that I have to feel from them. Yeah. So, so let's talk about with Pete, because yeah. it's about your relationship. Yeah. What so. kind of projections does Pete have at you? Wow. Okay. And we're talking now uh, on this when when Pete's disappointed or he's you know, or you're he's in a disagreement, or you're in a or disagreement, or you know he's withdrawn from you, or whatever it is that so causes all, you distress. It's all your fault. So. That causes you to go to it's all your fault. Yeah, okay, so it's the emotions, because I want to click, skip to these these other things. So the feelings in Peter that he's projecting, projecting at you, at me. Yeah. what are they? Because uh, this is what I you should need. do certain things? Is well, that still, that's not a real emotion though, is Well, it? that's true. It's a demand. He's placing a demand upon you. Yeah. Yeah. What's he, what's he, what's the feeling? And maybe, see, this is where you can help each other, because you, Pete, can go, yeah, what am I actually feeling? Yeah, I'm actually feeling that you're not a very nice person to me now. Or you know, what is it that you're actually feeling when you make her feel bad sexually about herself or or that you make oh, her yeah, feel... Yeah, so one thing would be like, um, if you love me... Uh, I'll like do this. The, yeah, the guilt thing? Yeah, the guilt thing. So you yeah. don't love me? So there's the feeling that you're projecting her that she is guilty. Yeah. Of not loving me. Yeah, yeah. of not loving you. That, I, that I'm not doing enough. I'm not doing enough to get through my issues. Yeah. That I've got um, that if that if I just got through my issues, then everything would be okay in our relationship. Correct. That's, what that's coming at you. Yeah. Yeah. And what's that really? That's saying that you're totally to blame, to blame. Yep. for what's going on. And I agree with that. You do. Um, though I get angry about it now. Well, you're starting to recognise it as an issue. Yeah. yeah. And that's why <laughs> you're getting angry. Which is, yeah. The anger is a build up of the feeling. That no, this is your issue, and, and it's not right. So it's yeah. not a bad thing necessarily. Having the anger, you yeah. do need to feel it, but but it's important to go through anger because when you go through anger, you start realizing, no, hang on a sec, that's not right. Yeah. And then you feel the injustice of it, and that's what causes your anger. Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what happening <laughs> yeah. now. Hey? I feel it's pretty unjust. Mm. Yeah. Um, 
What kind of feelings does Pete project at you about your sexuality? So what, what, maybe Pete, you can again help here. Okay. So this is, a, this, yeah. what we're trying to show you here is how you can collectively cooperate okay. to actually yeah. expose emotion that one of you has no idea about. Yeah. Right. So the other person can say, this is what I feel. Yeah. I, I project this at you and I project <laughs> that at you. And this is what I, and, and you go, well, I'm not, I didn't realise I'm getting all that. <laughs> no, I didn't want to know. <laughs> That's what I didn't want to know. <laughs> but said, no, I don't really want to do that. That's your no. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so what do you feel you do? Um, or what do you feel you feel? So let's say you're having a discussion about yep. uh, planning to do something with the house. Yep. Yep. And, and this, it gets a bit heated. Yep. And what's your feelings, Pete? Towards her, you can do it. <laughs> right? Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. You yeah. can do it. Why? Why you do? It? Why do you feel that? What's the feeling coming? Um, depending on what it is with the house, it's like I don't. I'm, it doesn't really phase me one way or other. If you want it that way, you no. Can but why it. are you angry then? But it does phase you. It must phase you. Um, because if I don't do it right or the way that you approve of, then there's a problem. Okay, so yeah. so the feeling coming from Pete is this accurate? The feeling coming from Pete is. He, he wants you to do it, but yep. he wants you to do it his way. Correct. <laughs> yeah. And if I do it my way or slightly differently or have a different idea, then yeah. it's not right. Okay. And he withdraws from you. Yep. yep. He, you, he, you're he, on your own. Ups, yeah, and he gets angry at me about or it Or another thing, so with a house, it's like I just want certain things done and I just want them done now. Yeah. So yeah. it's like... And so I'll always get on and do it. Yeah. So yeah. impatience? Yeah. It's huge, yeah. Impatience. Huge, impatience. huge impatience. Yeah. yeah. And huge, like... Um, like what's all the fuss about like just you know, you condescension it? condescension <laughs> yeah what are you being uh, silly come oh, on and, it, get it and done. if i did it if i did it it'd all be done by now and we wouldn't be having this problem that's yeah. another feeling that i get yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so a feeling that you're going out and doing a heap of things outside you come inside and it's not done inside yeah. what's the problem here and kind of wait so why, one yeah, phone call why aren't you why just getting on with it and doing yeah. it sort of thing yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Um, totally. Or, or sometimes <coughs> not, uh, another thing to this has a mapping, some mapping stuff. And I got excited about doing it and just investigating, getting some real high resolution photographs. And then Pete's like, why are you doing that? Like, we don't want to spend that much money on that right now. And I was like, well, I do, you know, and so there's this, but then I'll sacrifice that and go, okay, well, you don't want to. And, and I feel that he's the breadwinner. So if he doesn't approve of the purchases, then I shouldn't make them. Yeah. Um, and part of that's true, like I'm not taking financial responsibility. No, but in saying that, I will buy stuff. And on the other side of that too, though. Like <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't. <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't agree with a lot of your statements, but keep going. Right, I guess I feel. Um, <laughs> um, what else do we feel? Coming at you. I'm just trying to think about recent arguments. I feel like I'm not listened to, like... We had an argument recently about about arrogance and I was trying to um, sort of say to Pete where I saw the arrogance and how that felt. And I feel that even though we've had these extensive conversations, even though, and I can feel, like I can see that now, mm -hmm. I'm not necessarily feeling what I feel on the receiving end of that, but just trying to point, like say, no, don't oh, sorry, there it is again, you know, like, can you see that, can, you know? And just just total defensiveness, you know. And I just want to stop. I just want to go. All right, what's the point? Whereas, it, and it just feels like this sort of barrage of like, no, you're wrong. And all these words come at me. Um, that's not the feeling, though, is it? Um, Can you see how difficult, how much difficulty you're both huge having? Difficulty. Working out firstly what you're projecting at her, and secondly what I'm you're feeling, feeling um, from him. Can you see? Can you see if, if a, in a relationship, if you can't feel each other and you can't be open to each other's feelings, it's going to be quite difficult to resolve Actually. the problems, isn't it? Yeah, well, we don't even know what it is. <laughs> right? So this is, a, this, is imp this is the importance of, see, the beauty of getting closer to God is that God opens your feelings. Yeah. And the more you open your feelings, you, you also become more open to the, the other half. Right. And the beauty of the being open to your other half's feelings is while there might be some feelings coming from them that are not very nice, you'll at least know what they are. Yeah. And you'll also know your own feelings as a result of what's coming at you. Yeah. And what we're suggesting to you is that you're getting involved in argumentation with each other, right, conflict, without really understanding 
the underlying emotions that are triggering the conflict. I agree. Do you follow? Yeah. And and if you can't feel the underlying emotions triggering the conflict, you're always going to be dealing with the effects of the conflict itself rather than the cause of the conflict, which is the underlying emotions that are coming back and forward between the two of you. Yeah. You follow? And this is what's happening. And this is what's going on, right? And this is what causes a lack of resolution of issues in with for couples. Yeah. They're, they're involved in this backward, to and fro, backhanding yeah. <laughs> yeah. stuff that's going on a lot of the times, quite, uh, it's, and a lot of times it's quite emotionally violent. It yeah. is without understanding what the underlying feeling is inside of me that causes me to react in such a way and what the underlying feeling is inside of me that causes me to project all this emotion at the other person and what is all this emotion that I am projecting at the other person and then on the other person's side they don't feeling what's coming at them and what is causing you know the emotion that's caused within them and then all the emotion that's coming out of them back at the other person in order to prevent that particular emotional state from occurring and room. and this is where you get into these big like and and mm. while your fights certainly aren't uh what i would classify as uh um, a violent, <laughs> argumentative fight. You're, you're not you're both, verbally abusive not, towards You're both each withdrawals, other. right? Yeah. Where you would just withdraw away for a week or whatever yeah. or a day or two and <laughs> everything calms down. You're both passive-aggressive the way you dress it, whereas a lot of uh, couples are aggressive in the way they do it or one party's passive-aggressive and the other party's aggressive. Mm. But, but either in, in any of those scenarios, you're still not actually resolving what's really going on. Yeah, with the house that we're wanting to do and renovate here, I feel one of the things that comes out of me towards Eloisa is, look, I'm stressed enough. Don't stress me anymore. Just get on. Yeah, and do it. But so. then there's the other thing that she has to do it your way. Yeah, mm, yeah. and that we also notice come out of you as well. So she she she, ha she hasn't got. It's a no-win situation for Eloise. So yeah, she, like, she has to do like, it, <laughs> but she can't find out from you what you want done. Yeah. And, I'm too but, busy for that. If she doesn't guess right, yeah. then she's in trouble. Yeah. And and yeah. Eloisa hates being in trouble. I hate being in trouble. <laughs> I do anything. That's not one of the addictions. You just don't put me in trouble. Don't put me in trouble. If you're going to put me in trouble, I'm not going to do anything at all. Right? That's yeah. so good. And cool. and. And this is what I'm saying is you, you've got to see the underlying emotions that are coming out of each of you and the underlying emotions that are going on within each of you that you're trying to avoid by projecting out these other emotions at the other person. Do you follow mm. me? Does and this requires per taking real personal responsibility for your feelings. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yep. So what, if we go back to the conversation now... <clears throat> What's coming out of you from Peter? What's coming out of Peter towards you? Just feeling-wise, that you can feel from him in Any most interactions you have that mean anything to both of you. I feel he feels better than me. Mm -hmm. Feel that. I don't really feel like my opinion has much value. Mm -hmm. um, Whose opinion has value? Pete's. No. Oh. Truthfully, whose opinion? Truthfully, whose opinion has no, value? No, I'm saying whose oh. opinion from Pete's perspective has value. Oh, yeah. You said Pete's. Mine. No. no. See, my, no. my opinion is when I observe, the man's opinion has value. It's a male, oh, female thing. thing. Okay. It's not oh, okay, just a Pete, male. Eloisa thing. Sorry. <laughs> it's a man, woman thing. <laughs> Okay. So if, if you look at the history of Pete that we went through yes. before in the previous session, yep. we talked to Pete about his childhood growing up. There is this underlying man-woman thing going on yep. where the woman has less, her opinions matter less. Yep. The man's opinions matter more. Yep. The woman has to become like the man. Correct. The woman being emotional and, and intuitive is less developed than the man's logic. Yep. These are these. So it's a man-woman thing. It's not just a Pete Eloisa thing. You, yep. you see... If you just see it as a Pete Eloisa thing, it's the same with your injuries. If you just see it as an Eloisa Pete thing, rather than rather than 
man woman thing going right back to your childhood right back to your yes. individual you know to the individual injuries you have then you're not seeing the truth and this is where we get stuck because then we start blaming rather than Each going other. no hold yeah. on this is yeah. something that actually originated way back yeah poor pete right yeah. he's been grown up with this Correct. terrible indoctrination of, yeah. of arrogance yeah. and it's very hard to remove and um, yeah. chauvinism is really it's, what it's, you're talking yeah, about chauvin yeah male yeah. chauvinism yeah. very difficult to remove yeah. it's going to take a lot of effort on his part to remove He's going to need as much help as he can get to remove it. Yeah. And he's going to have to have a lot of personal sincerity to do it. And it's not even his fault it got there in the first place. Yeah, and that's and the same answer. applies to you. Yeah. All these sexual other and other issues that you raise to each other, Pete's blaming you, but poor Eloisa. I go, hang on a sec, Eloisa. Yeah. This come, you didn't choose to get abused. You didn't yeah. choose to, do you see what I'm saying? You didn't choose yes. these things. These I things were done to you. Yeah. So, so how about you both stop blaming each other for them? Start being honest about And start being honest from. where they came from. You see, and this is one of the problems of not attributing the appropriate responsibility to where something came from is that you end up blaming each other for them when actually they got inside of you before you even met. Yeah. And, and, and the only thing you're, if you're to blame for anything, to blame for is not taking responsibility <laughs> to get rid of them. <laughs> and choosing to continue. And to choose to yeah. let them have a terrible effect on your life. That's really the only thing that, you know, you can actually say you're to blame for, you know. Yeah. So if Mary, if, I, if we raise a whole heap of issues together and I, and I go to Mary, I'm not going to deal with that. Now Mary's got something to blame me for, right? <laughs> but before one. then, most of what I'm doing comes from some other source. Yeah. And, and, and while I need to make the choice to remove it from myself. Yeah. Be 100% responsible. And be 100% yeah. responsible, not just part responsible third. and third or yeah. whatever. And while I need to make, take these actions, it, my, the actual problem got inside of me through a completely different cause, not related to my choice. Yeah. It's now inside of me and it's my choice to release it or to keep it there. Yeah. That's, yep. that's my choice. I've got a choice to either leave, keep it all there and have, it ter have a terrible effect on my life or I have a choice to release it and work through the issue so that it no longer affects my life. Now, I know what choice I'd prefer to make, but you guys have to decide what choice you want to make with that. Yeah. But what I'm suggesting to you, when you blame each other yeah. for the things that are inside of you that came from somewhere other than you two, then you're That's already right. out of army with truth there, right? Totally. Yep. And therefore, it's going to be hard to resolve. Yep. So, so this is what you've got to stop judging and blaming yourself for things that you didn't choose to, to have inside of yourself, that got inside of you through a whole series of processes. And up until the age of seven years of age, you weren't even developed enough intellectually to understand what that process even was. Yeah. But, but you accepted, you know, the, the emotional acceptance was there. So, so it came inside of you. Acknowledge that for each other. Give yourself... Yeah that compassionate understanding and the compassionate understanding to the other person that allows you to see that truth. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's number one. Secondly, see the feelings coming out of each other towards the other person. Allow yourself to feel them. Right? So what we want to do maybe is list some of those feelings we notice yeah. coming out of it towards each other. Because obviously you're hopeless at doing it yeah, totally <laughs> at the moment. Now, I'm not suggesting you, you can improve with that yeah. by allowing yourself to sit yeah. and feel, yeah. having time for a feeling and reflection. And this is very good. You're starting to change your life and not be as busy because this gives you opportunity to sit and feel. But also... Um, Get closer to God. Work your way through your issues of God. Receive some of God's love. That always puts you in more sensitive attunement with emotion. And, and the more sensitive you become emotionally, the easier you're going to find it to determine what's going on and where it came from. Makes sense, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Okay, so let's, let's list some of the things we notice um, because I, I feel if, if we can list some of those things for you, you can either, you know, we'll like, say, oh, oh yeah. uh, no, I don't feel that one or I do feel that one or <laughs> yeah, whatever. Cool. Right? <laughs> okay. So we've written down some things, haven't we, in terms of emotions that we've noticed coming at? Well, yes, and emotions that you go into addiction to avoid. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yep. Cool. So anger. Yep. Either overt or passive aggressive. Yep. So, so if someone projects at you passive aggressive or overt anger, yep. you instantly in self blame. Correct. Yeah. Right. I can't yep. disagree. Yep. 
So that's one of the emotions you're trying to avoid when you go to self-blame. You're trying to avoid their anger and yep. avoid their passive aggressive anger. But there's a deeper reason about why. The, your response emotionally yeah, to emotional. that anger yep. is yep. what you're we're, avoding. You're, yeah. you're, it's yep. what you're in yep. the end avoiding. That's the thing you've got to find. Yep. 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 Control and manipulation. So, so I'm being controlled and manipulated into doing what the other person wants me to do. You yeah. feel that from Peter, don't you? Yeah, I do. I've been saying I don't. I skip over that one. Mm -hmm. And remember when we were talking to Pete, we talked about how he exploits <coughs> some of your injuries, yes. which is a form of control and manipulation. Yes. Yeah. So he notices you have an injury and then he uses that injury as a way of making you feel bad about yourself to change your behaviour. Then I do what he wants. Yeah, then yeah. you do what he wants. Yeah. And particularly with sexual issues. Yeah. And like we discussed, so there wasn't, I'm just in total agreement with that. I wasn't noticing that one either. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And one of the ways he does that is shame. Yes. Projects yeah. that you are shameful sexually. Yeah. yeah. So he's had and a damaged. much more, should we call it a moral sexual life? <laughs> yeah. In yeah. some ways than you have. Right? Yeah. He does not yet understand the, the reasons why you engaged sexually in the past the way you did yeah and he does not see even a lot of that being caused by the abuse you suffered as a child yeah right so so because of that lack of understanding he just sees it as a personal thing of hurt towards him yeah does it make sense yeah and then he uses that shaming of you yeah which by the way you already feel pretty bad about yourself I feel really sexually bad about it. And so it makes you feel quite bad in order to try to get you to to engage with him sexually. Of yeah. course, it has the opposite effect. Yeah. We'll, and we'll talk about we'll that talk more about in the next that. session. Cool. It has the opposite effect. But, he, but, but what we're saying is the emotion coming at you is you should be ashamed of yourself. Yeah. That's the emotion. Yeah. And I've it? really... It's true that I've wanted to avoid that feeling. I don't want to admit that that's a feeling that comes at me from Pete mm. because I already feel so bad about it mm. and I'd rather that it didn't come at me. Yeah. 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 And the feeling that if you really loved him, you would comply with him sexually in a way that you have. No. Well, there's also other feelings too that I feel like it's almost like sometimes Pete feels like you... It's a terrible blight on the past and there's nothing he can do about it now, but he's really sad about it and, and he feels like, you know, it, 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 it's sort of like many men have this same feeling when their soulmates, they find out their soulmates have been prostitutes. Do you follow me? Mm -hmm. Where they feel like, oh, she's had so many men and like, it feels terrible for me that she's had so many men and, and it all gets down to self-esteem. How do I measure up with all these guys? And, you know, there's a lot of self-esteem issues that are involved in it that we avoid, yeah. right? And so what we finish up doing is projecting at the woman, you should be ashamed of yourself for being a slut rather than... Yeah, and I'm not even all, like aware that I'm actually doing that. Oh, okay. oh, I don't know about that one, Pete. Okay. If you think uh, about feel... when you read my stuff, yeah, how I've shocked you were about the things I've observed that you read. it a few times. and It's yeah. a feeling that you have so in that you... The... A feeling towards Eloisa that... You're disgusted by some of her conduct in the past, and that you feel like. And there's little compassion for the reasons why she, or understanding for the reasons why she engaged it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. You, you don't understand. And if you truly could feel her, you would understand why it was engaged and sometimes a feeling of like we well, did that with those other guys why don't you do that with we well, do stuff with me you know and the, the feeling of it's almost competition with those past men a feeling you're being rejected and they were accepted and it's it's all which a is flawed, the feelings you're avoiding that's yeah. not how god views what happened yeah. actually eloisa has more of a sincere feeling of desire to love you than she had with those other men yeah. um, but she behaved in certain ways because of fears and injuries and addictions in herself back then and uh, and because of abuse. Well, yes. Which is a, a large... The cause of all of those things was abuse, yeah. yeah. Which is a large impact upon a person's sexual development and their ability to make wise choices later on in their life. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, and condescension, that's the one that you have clocked from Pete. Yeah, beginning, I still miss it a lot, but I'm beginning to, to mm. see that. Yeah, mm. more, I think. Yeah. So... 
And will I talk about this? Yeah, so, yeah, so there's this group of emotions that are coming out of Pete towards you. Now, yeah. obviously, Pete can stop them. Yeah. But, but at the end of the day, even if he stops them, so I'm suggesting he does yeah. because it's not loving to project them. Yeah. But even if he does, if he did stop them, you would still be open to receiving them. Correct. From other people other than Pete. Yeah. And therefore, you will be then be manipulated by other people. And then you'll have an whole different set of <laughs> problems, problems to address, right? Yeah. What if a man comes along and projects at you shame about your sexuality? What are you going to do then? I agree. You know? Yeah. So, well, you know, already, will you get yeah. so low about yourself that you'll even engage him sexually? Why well, not have? In the it's past you have. True. So, you know, these are so so what I'm suggesting is yes, Pete needs to address the particular projections coming out of him towards oh, you. I need to deal with that. Why well, didn't? Correct. If you don't address your acceptance of them, then what's going to happen is you no know, even he can be he'll be perfected <laughs> and you'll be still accepting all of these <laughs> Yeah. Things which are which are which mean that you will not have perfected your love of yourself. Yeah, this is my <coughs> biggest issue, isn't it? This love of self stuff. It is a big issue for you, Eloise. Yeah. God's trying to teach you a lot about love of self. Mm. Yep, yeah. and you can see through the last uh, five years that we've known you, a lot of your anger when we first met you was definitely about love of self. Right? If you look back at it, your projection out of you was. Everyone now has to look after me because, you know, because you had no love of yourself to do yeah, it for yourself, right? Yeah, everyone to love me. You wanted everybody to do it for you. And, you know, you've worked through some of these issues of love of self. Well, you've, you know, you've decided you don't, want, you don't want to harm others with that projection anymore, <laughs> yeah. but you still haven't chosen to love not, yourself. Yeah, not to harm, mm. yeah. Not, not harm myself. And yeah. you're still engaged in addictive behaviour which helps you avoid the lack of love of self. Yes. You follow me? And uh, what yeah. we're pointing out is this is one of those addictions that you have to accept these kind of projections at you. If you think about the kind of projections, they are all relating to superiority, condescension, a feeling that you should be ashamed of yourself and so forth. And they are all basically saying that this person is higher than you. Yeah. Uh, that's what they're saying to you. These projections are actually saying that to you. Yeah. Well, I and just feel I'm inferior to them. Mm, yeah. Again, no. <laughs> just just watch. Be because Stop going this, there. No, you want to feel, feel inferior. Yeah. You want to because what happens, this is the question you have to answer yourself, what <coughs> happens if you start saying, hey, buddy, no, you're not superior no. to me. What are you afraid is going to happen? That's what oh. you have to face. Shit. Yeah, okay. Because at the moment you just go, yeah, yeah, no, you are better, you are better, feel worse about yourself, oh. but you, you avoid this other thing. Yeah, um, you, you'd be I happy for the lose. next 100 years going, yeah, I'm terrible, yeah, I'm yeah. terrible. You would. But if and we, that's the problem. Yeah. Because you're not going to get any closer to God accepting this. No. <laughs> and you, like we talked about with Pete, you don't help him with in, his injury where he has to realise from a soul perspective, hey, That he's no. not superior. Yeah. Men and women are equal. Yeah. And, and to be honest, if you in, keep engaging this addiction, then, then and Pete keeps engaging his addiction, like 100 years' time, you're both not going to be any closer to God whatsoever. No. Because, no. because how can you be? You, you both don't have God's opinion, even of the other half of yourself, let alone other people. Correct. So it's not, it's not going to work, right? You can't get closer yeah. to God that way. It's going, after 100 years of trying, you're just going to be frustrated with the whole divine truth thing, you know? Yeah. Trust me, after five years of doing it, you're going to be frustrated if you're not careful, right? <laughs> <laughs> so what you want to do is you, you want to address the issue, which is the actual addiction. The addiction yeah. to keep blaming yourself. Yeah. And think that you are inferior. Yeah. You you want to think you are inferior. Yeah. Because it helps you avoid other emotions. Well, I think as Mary's saying, if I wasn't and I was equal to Pete, mm -hmm. that means that that well, you, I'm I'm not as bad as I want to think I am. Mm -hmm. it means I have worth, have value. It means that I actually like, like, I would make probably very different decisions than I make now, and I'd I probably agree. stand. You Stand more firm, which means I don't have to take responsibility for myself. <laughs> well, there's a lot of things that would change and you're afraid of those things and you're yeah. afraid of potential things, your things that you think might happen that scare you. But it's not the fear that, that's causing you to no. 
to yeah. have the emotional I'm response. I'm kind of fishing. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. stop there. <laughs> Can I give you a clue? Yes, please. It's a lot about how you feel about yourself that you're trying to avoid. All right. You do not want to feel what you really feel about yourself. Right what someone's told me that I am or whatever, which I've, is that something I've taken on or is it like as a kid? Of course you've yeah. taken it on, yeah. All right, cool. Mm. You don't want to feel what you really feel about yourself. And you don't want to feel what other people really feel about you. Right. That's the big one, I think. Yeah, I think so. Well, I can understand parts of that. Like some people really hate me. Yeah. Like they, they don't like me at all. Mm. And they don't want to. Yeah. And that makes me feel really bad. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the big emotions you're avoiding. Yeah. 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 And I think I think I think it kind of goes into that very feeling of of the women thing, like just that being a woman is just like. <laughs> I don't know, there's, no, there's nothing. Why would you even want to be one, <laughs> really? Mm, no, you, you are going to have to go through some anger about that and some sadness about that, for sure. Yeah. And to be honest, most women are going to probably have to go through the same emotion. Yeah. Because the reality is, historically, women have been treated very badly. Women have been treated like possessions rather than people. You know, and as a result of that, most many women today, even if they have not been abused, have this multi-generational emotion passed down to them. Yeah. So they have a deep sense of feelings that they, you know, basically need to completely deny their femininity in order to survive in the world. Yeah. yeah. And in fact, many women are very angry, even when they get shown, even just a tiny smidge of their femininity comes out. Interesting. They get very angry because they are very afraid about what that what everybody will notice. Yeah. If that femininity comes out, so it is a big problem, right? Mm. Yeah, and afraid of what's going to happen to me. Maybe those are the perceived fears you're talking about. Like if I am myself, I'd rather rip myself down. No, it's more afraid of what you're going to feel about yourself. Okay. Sister. Go mm. in there. See, yeah. if we focus, if you focus your effort here. Yeah on feeling what's coming at you yep. and feeling the truth about what other people feel about you. Okay. <clears throat> like, if I can give you an example in our life. When we had our first uh, media stuff that went on a few years ago, you, 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 you were involved in the beginning of that sort of thing. Yep. We received around about 800 very, very abusive and attacking emails. Right? That's what people felt about us. That's the feelings they felt for us. Of course, they didn't know whether what they heard was true or not. Yeah. But that was the feelings they had that were projected at us. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Okay. And some of those feelings were like, you know, murderous, like torture and abuse and all sorts of things, right? They were projecting at us, right? Now, if I choose to avoid feeling those feelings, yeah. can you see I have to shut down myself from feeling yeah. In order to avoid it. Yeah. And therefore I would shut down towards my other half, wouldn't I? I would have to, I would then shut down towards other people yeah. as well. I wouldn't be able to sensitively feel them either. You'd avoid talking. And I'd avoid talking. I'd withdraw probably, right? Can you see? Absolutely. One of the reasons why I do all of those things is because I'm just feeling this barrage of emotion. And because I don't want to feel my response to it. You know, how bad it is that, you know, it, seemingly everybody on the planet hates your guts type of feeling. And, and I don't want to feel about that. I could then go and do a whole heap of things. I could, tell, I could even just do the intellectual thing. Oh, they just don't know what they're talking about because it was all a whole heap of crap that was presented anyway. Just delete the lot. So there, there I just, what I did, just did in that one sentence was intellectually detune myself yeah. from feeling the emotions coming at me. Yeah. You follow me? Yeah. It's a great way of manipulating my own emotional condition so that I don't have to feel what's going on. Yeah. You follow? Yeah. So what am I doing? I'm just avoiding my own feelings. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. Right? And this is why you do what you do. You're yeah. avoiding your own feelings. You're not... So when you go into this feeling of self-punishment and self-attack, you're not feeling your own feelings. No. You're avoiding your own feelings. I agree. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, look, I've got lots of research on go and go back and read what people have said to me and yep. yeah, all those things. Yeah. But in your relationship, yeah, mm-hmm. hard, yeah, when you're suppressing, Pete has these negative projections at you at times. At times, yep. But the condescension one, you know, it's. It's fairly permanent. routine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you suppress the sensitivity to it. Yes. You detune from yourself. And also with these other things where we talked about you trying to become more like a man to try and get his approval, suppressing more of your femininity. It's a natural effect that you will shut down your sexuality as a part of that. All right. Automatic. So, Okay. This is what Jesus and I have been trying to help you see yeah. for quite a while that, yes, you have sexual issues from your childhood, but there's this other major thing that's impacting upon your sexual life now in your partnership, which is your decision to detune from what's coming towards you, detune from how, sorry, how you feel in response to what's coming towards you. Mm-hmm. And that's causing you to shut down sexually. Yeah. So the cool thing is when you begin to open up more, even if some of what you're feeling is, you know, challenging and all of those things. It'll be you, hard. You yeah. do have to speak up more with Pete and it f- triggers more and you'll have sadness in sadness you and things. And... You will actually open up more sexually. Because at, at the moment you punish yourself for your sexual shutdown, which is just another. Avoidance of an issue. Yeah. Yeah. Avoidance of an issue. Yeah. And also I suspect that if I at least felt what was coming towards me and I felt my stuff about that, then I wouldn't be just completely sexually shut down. Like some sexually shut down on my own or with Pete most mm-hmm. of the time. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, I don't I don't know the difference of when I'm shut down because I'm shut down because of me or when I'm shut down when yeah. stuff's coming out. And this is what a lot of women don't realise is that when they try to become a man, they try to, they're trying to shut down their emotion a lot. Yeah. Right? When you try to shut down your emotion, you're now in the state of, the soul-based state of, of suppression. Yeah. The soul-based state of suppression is that if you suppress one emotion, you're going to be suppressing everything. So that means that you might be trying to suppress, oh, the feeling that you feel bad because of what other people feel about you, that you're trying to suppress that inside of yourself. But in the process, you're also now suppressing your sexuality, your, your, your desires, your, your, your passions, creativity. The, the creativity, and every, sing, every single thing else that's going on inside of your soul is also getting suppressed. Because the way the soul works is if you can't selectively suppress, right? You think you can, yeah. but you can't. Yeah. Right? God didn't. God designed it so that you can't selectively suppress emotion. That's how God designed your soul. So, so what you're doing is you're suppressing certain parts of yourself, yeah. trying to get the approval of others, and then hoping at the same time that that, that your sexuality won't be suppressed. Yeah. Well, good luck with that, right? Because it's not—it's not, not going to work, is it? It hasn't been working, has it? No. no. What happens instead is your sexuality will be just as suppressed as every other part that you're trying to suppress. Yeah. And the, yep. the amount of effort you put into suppressing the other part will also be against your and the suppression of your sexuality. Is that why it's getting even worse now? Like, of course. Like before it was like you could sort of, I could, no, lie. <laughs> I was going to tell you a lie. <laughs> but, <laughs> but what I'm observing now is it's like just complete shutdown. Like there's no, if I go down into that place, there's just nothing. Whereas before I might have been able to like do a little bit of something. Well, we, we want to talk to you in a second part about the yeah. sexual side of things because there's anger and other issues involved okay. too here. Yeah. Right? No worries. And we, what we're doing is only highlighting one of the issues yeah. and not all of them. Yep. And, and a lot of these issues, some of the issues revolve around anger and what's going on with anger. Okay. Remember when I said to Pete before how he's projecting different things at you at different times and yeah. so you're going what do i do here what do i do here? i'll try that that didn't work that, that works now but it didn't work before why did that work now and all those kind of things once that uh, kind of dynamic continues to occur you end up feeling like you're just in a cage and you can't really move right yeah and that and most people when they're in that place get very angry okay and when they get very angry that's when they purposefully shut down things yes yeah, so including clear. purposely shutting down their sexuality Right. Uh, as a as an action, yeah. you know, like as a punishment. As a punishment. To Pete. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. And you end up punishing yourself as well because you don't have yeah. any sexual pleasure or exactly. desire or No, no that's the irony or, of a lot yeah. of this kind of punishment <laughs> stuff is you end up punishing yourself just as much as you're trying to punish the other person. Would you? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, you know, a lot of, if, if, even if you just worked on, we, we've really just raised one primary yeah. issue with Pete today, <laughs> and, and there's five or six aspects of it, there's just one primary issue, yeah. and we're just raising this primary issue with <laughs> yourself, <laughs> one, one primary out. issue, right? yeah. and that is the acceptance of this barrage and your yeah. automatic tendency to go into the punishment self-blame and, state. Yeah. Yeah. In an avoidance of some emotion that you're trying to avoid that's coming from other people towards you and that causes you to feel certain things about yourself. Yeah. And, and you're in, if you just both dealt with those, each, that one problem, yep. you can see that your life would probably significantly change in terms of the way you treat each other, right? Yeah. 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 Huge. Your whole dynamic of your relationship would be different, and yeah, it'd be so much more fun being around each other all the yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, yeah. At a certain time. Yeah, yeah. 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 And also, um, like as you were saying about sharing and stuff like that, then we're actually working with each other. So then there's automatically so much more to share with each other and talk about, and that yeah. whole yeah, um, being with each other becomes more enjoyable. Yeah. So what we'd probably like to do now, I think we've covered most yeah. of what we were going to discuss yeah. on today's sessions with you. What we'd like to do now is is make a recommendation to you. Yes, please. <laughs> Instead of being competitors, yeah. <laughs> who basically disagree with each other a lot, right? Yeah. And and who basically want to argue and fight, whatever. Whether you do it overtly or not, yeah. we're yeah. still doing it. Yeah. 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 Right. What we what we would like to suggest to you with the one issues that with the one issue that we've raised for each of you is that both of you seek to know the truth about that issue for yourselves and for the sake of the other person. So in other words, <clears throat> your focus now is not punishing each other for what you're doing to each other, mm. right? Or punishing yourself for what's happening, yeah. right? which is your tendency, but rather to actually help each other by discussing these particular things with each other, taking notice of what's going on in your interactions with each other, mm -hmm. making observations, highlighting to each other when a particular thing is actually happening and asking each other what's the emotion that's being avoided and even ask yourself what do you think the emotion the other person is that they're avoiding what can you feel it from them yeah like so for example there, there's two sets of things you need to consider here one is can i feel what emotion mary might be avoiding in order as to why as to why she's now reverted to self-punishment what, what is it she's trying to skip away from? Yep. Does it make sense? Can I feel it? So if I can feel it and Mary can't, I can help her feel it. But if I can't feel it and Mary can't feel it, then we probably haven't got much of a chance <laughs> to work through it, right? But if one of us at least can feel it, yeah. we've got some hope here. You follow me? Yes. Now, there are different injuries that each of you have, some of which you can't personally feel, but the other person can and vice versa. So, so allow yourself with this particular one issue for, uh, for arrogance with yourself, Pete, for the punishment, self-blame, self-punishment, self-blame, acceptance, and what you're avoiding emotionally, what's coming at you emotionally for yourself. Allow each other to work with each other and discuss with each other what's actually happening yeah. rather than being antagonists yeah. with each other, yeah. fighting with each other about what's happening. Yeah. Do you follow? Yeah. Yeah. And if you can, if you can set up that dynamic with these one, with these single issues, yeah. then the, then the next set of issues that you face, whatever that be, and there will be hundreds, by the way, yeah. in your progress, <laughs> because every person has lots and lots of injuries from their childhood that does need to be addressed if you're ever going to become at one with God. So there will be usually hundreds of issues that will come up. You will be able to cooperatively work through them together rather than being antagonists. Yeah. Right. And, and this is going to help you greatly. You're the people with, who live with each other the closest. I won't be afraid of feedback anymore. You won't be afraid of feedback. You won't be afraid of giving it. Yeah. You won't be afraid, Eloisa, you won't be afraid of feedback. You won't be afraid of giving it. But the, but the focus of the feedback is not to judge, not to punish, not to make the other person's life hell, but rather to simplify your lives by understanding the truth 
And, and, and this will help both of you also develop humility. And it will also, because it will also make you feel closer because now instead of feeling like your antagonists and enemies, your friends. Yeah. Your yeah. friends working towards the common goal of getting closer with each other. You follow? Yeah. And, and, and this particular process is very, very important if you're going to resolve every problem that comes up. Right? So, so, so there's two things to learn here. There's the problem itself. That's one thing to learn. And the second thing to learn is how to deal with the problem itself. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And how to deal with the problem itself is actually more important yeah. than the problem itself. Yeah. Because the reality is you have hundreds of problems potentially to deal with. But if you know how to deal with them in a loving, humble, yeah. truthful manner, then you, you can see that you can make great you strides in your progress. Problem. You, you do can apply every... the same process to everything new that comes exactly. along, yeah. which is why we've talked so much about the primary questions, the two primary yes. questions, the four supplemental yeah. questions, and then yesterday, do I really want to change and grow and where's my will? Do I really want to love as God loves? Do I believe in God's truth and do I want to strive for it? And do I want to be humble in these situations? Because mm. if you can do all of those things together, you yeah. sorted. Well, listen, I'm, I'm just, when, when you talk, it's obviously very inspiring when we go home, we <laughs> lose it. But, exactly. yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, it's like, it becomes, there's two, you know, there's two of us working on the problem rather than just this isolation of like, <laughs> do yours, do yours. Well, it's actually much worse at the moment than you imagine. Yeah. <laughs> Give it to right? us. <laughs> You're not singly working on problems. We're not even working on problems at all. You're singly working against problems. Right. So, so can I exp explain what I mean by that? The best, if you think about it, the best course of action is for both of you to be working on the same problems at the same time in, in a positive uh, direction towards God's way, right? That's, that's the best possible solution. Mm -hmm. The second best solution is that one of you stays where you are yeah. and the other one works towards God's solution. That's the second best solution. Yeah. The third best solution is both of you stay where you are. <laughs> A really very good one. The fourth best solution, which I can think now feel is starting to get into the worst solution, <laughs> is, there, <laughs> is that one is actively trying to destroy the other. Yeah. Pull the other pull down. Pull the other the down. Other. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then the worst possible scenario is both of you are trying to do that to each other. Yeah. Right? And at times we were. And at times you are both in that place. Yeah. And at times you're in the place where one's trying to pull the other down yeah. instead of actually even stay where you currently are. And and there are times when some of, one of you is trying to pull the other up and the other's resistive. But as yet, you've yet to try. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <So> together. <laughs> both of you together working on the particular problem. You follow me? That one un untried <laughs> option. Yeah. <laughs> Considering and all the other three haven't worked too good. That all of the other states are, are, are very difficult states to address in a relationship because, because either you're both pulling each other down or one person's pulling the other down yeah. or both of you are steadfastly staying exactly where you are. Yeah. So the, there's already three different states there, right? Or one of you is trying to pull the other up and the other one's trying to resist it. All of those states are states of conflict. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The only state that's not a state of conflict is where both of you are friends working together to solve the particular problems and issues that you face. Yeah. That's the only place where there's not a state of conflict. So you can have faults in that place. You, you can both be imperfect in that place. But if you've both got that will, that, that strong soul-based desire to be loving, truthful and humble in every situation, we're going to work together on resolving the issues we know about first <laughs> And then we'll try to discover the ones we don't afterwards. Yes. Yeah. But let's resolve the issues you know about first. Yeah. And, and we're both working towards that particular goal. Yeah. You can see that that's the state where now you have some hope to improve. But not only that, if you think about it, both of your wills are in the same direction. Yeah. Whereas every other yeah. state, your wills are completely opposed to each other. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, it's much harder to resolve a problem when the wills of the parties involved in the problem are opposed yeah. than it is if the wills of the party involved are all together in the same, in harmony. Yeah. And that means that they can have different opinions, but their will is not opposed. Their will is, let's 
resolve this problem in a loving, humble, truthful way. Let's work through the issue. You follow? It's like the common goal thing. It's like if we're both working towards this 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 common well, wanting basically yeah. to be at one with God. It is like a common goal, that. but you think about it. This is emotional projections. It's not like right. you're just intellectually working towards a common goal. No, it is it's an emotional hard. projection. See, yeah. when you're in these states of disharmony, there's emotional projections, terrible emotions yeah. going towards each other. Very difficult, very difficult emotions to even let yourself feel, let alone address. Right? Yeah. And, and those emotional states make your life very difficult and traumatic and very sad and, yeah. and, very, and, and, and oftentimes create fear, anger and resentments and all other kinds of things as a result of those emotions. You, you don't realise yet that when you're working together emotionally, the power of that is yeah. so strong that you can resolve pretty much any problem that comes up, right? And you can resolve it and both of you work through the issues emotionally. That is the only state where there is no opposition. Now, to get for most couples, that state is just a like a, a dream. Like, yeah. you know, it's not it's not reality, right? <laughs> yeah. But the beauty and, and most people think that that's only possible when you're at one with God. And that's not true. That state where you're both working together as friends is possible from the hells onwards. So it's right. possible so now. We can do it now. <laughs> you can do it any time in your development. It's a it's a will based choice yeah. to stop being enemies and to start being friends. It's a will based choice to make sure that you're working in harmony with the principles of love, truth, and humility, and the exercise of your will, so that you make the choice to love each other and help each other through the process instead of trying to fight each other all the time. And this is going to require a lot of humility out of you. It's going to require a lot of desire for truth out of you. It's going to require you really focusing on desiring love above all things. It's going to require a very strong exercise of your, your will, your emotional will, yeah. and, and addressing anything inside of you that conflicts with that emotional will. But it's the only state where there is no conflict. Yeah. And, and benefits of that state are... Like the, most people on earth have never felt the benefits of that state, no. right? Yeah. Yep. So, so like, uh, for many years, myself and Mary were in that state of conflict, yeah. where one or both of us were either, you know, we're pulling the other down, or one's trying to pull the other up and the other's resisting. I don't think you've ever or, tried to pull me down, honey. Whatever. I've tried to pull you down, but yeah, I, I haven't tried to pull down. Mary down. But we're still in a state of conflict. Yeah. Together, we're in a state of conflict. If you compare, if you get our relationship and one of us is trying to pull, pull us up and the other one's trying to, trying to stay where they are, that's even a state of conflict. So, so it's only recently that we've entered a state of Emotion. friendship, yeah. of a, state, a state of no conflict. Does that make sense? Every emotional thing gets resolved very, very rapidly in that state. You find yeah. truth very rapidly. Just yeah, because we have the same will-based attitude towards any issue that comes up. It's not about blame. It's not about competition anymore. It's about what is the truth, what is the cause, how do we move forward? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, like, like when we first met, was now seven or eight years ago, seven years ago, whatever now, and my feelings with, with Mary was I want to get us into a state of harmony first. That's, that's our first step. Yeah. Right. I need to do personally everything I can possibly do to, get, to, to make that state of harmony happen. Right? And that meant enduring quite a lot of different stuff in yeah. the, initially from the other party just to get to that state of harmony. But now the, we're in the state of harmony. Now really we've got good. some hope for a progression, right? Yeah. Now is the time where you can start enjoying your progression because yeah. you're in a state of harmony. And the state of harmony is all about how you exercise your will. Yep. That's the, that creates the state of harmony. When the will is exercised in the common, for the common good of you of as soul. a couple, yeah. the soul, yep. both of you together, as a couple, when, the common, when everything is aimed towards that, 
now you're not going to fight unnecessarily or any of those kind of things. You'll have disagreements still. But I'm not going to want to avoid my feelings all the time. You're not going to want to avoid your feelings? You're but not going to want to put down the other no, person no. or suppress the other person or shut them down or yeah. control them or manipulate them or, you know, do something, get them to do something so your feeling can go away. You don't do any of that anymore because your will is exercised in harmony with just wanting to progress. You want your soul to be happier than it currently is. Yeah. And... And in that place, you've, you can progress much more rapidly too because, because every other place, there's this place of pulling apart yeah. that's going on, yeah. pulling apart all the time. And, and the pulling apart all the time wears you out. Yeah. Emotionally, it wears you exhausting. out. It's exhausting. And, and it creates all sorts of havoc. And, and most of the time it's because we both want to hold on to our own personal opinions rather than accept God. <laughs> so <laughs> And, and if you have a focus on it, right, all our goal is now, we forget about our own personal opinions being important. They're not important at all. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, we're probably going to have to give most of them up anyway. <laughs> so they're not important at all. What matters only is that we refine the truth and find the truth in a state of love while we're doing it, in a state of humility while we're doing it. We find the truth and then we live that truth together. Yeah. Right. When, when you live your relationship like that, you'll find that things will greatly change in terms of the harmony yeah. that occurs in the relationship. And you can still have errors. You can still have sin that you need to work your way through. But, but that state of harmony, now that it exists, is not ex you're not exhausted anymore. That all of your effort is combined and all of your effort is not exhausting. You're not working against the other person in any way or trying to pull them somewhere or push them somewhere or pull them down or push them up or whatever. None of that's happening anymore. Each person's personally responsible Perfect. for their own stuff. And, and as a result, you, you have this beautiful relationship developed then where now you can feel your friends, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Nice. Real friends. Mm -hmm. and, and as a result of now being real friends, you're helping each other to have more knowledge of truth. You're not trying to attack the other, pull them down, denigrate them in any way. Everything is focused towards building your soul up closer and closer to God all the time. Yeah. And you find there's a lot more energy. All that energy that you were expending on even just yeah. guarding your own personal yeah. opinion, you can now it's devote to other things, <laughs> yeah. productive, wonderful things like going towards God or being together or creating something for other people. And whereas when we were locked in that state for so long, it just drained so much energy, obviously, because you fight very hard to get things emotionally done. all the time. Yeah. Very hard to get things done. Because yeah. well, you, you, yeah. you're in this emotional turmoil all the time trying to get something done. I think that's the key. It's the emotional thing, you know, like it doesn't matter what it looks like on the surface or what you think is doing. It's all this emotional exchange. And as it's been demonstrated in a talk with us, it's like we don't even clock a lot of that like conch we we're clocking the yeah. emotional exchange. you're clocking it but responding from the soul yeah. 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 <laughs> whereas we're not going oh wow what's really going on here like, yeah. what, what, what is this and not cooperatively yeah. working together for the solution no. from god's perspective what you're only wanting at this stage is your own solution correct you know, yeah. does that make sense yeah. to both of and you? And at the like, moment, it's pretty unloving. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and, no, and for the average people in a relationship, it is. Yeah. Their own solution is their own perception, and their own perception came from a lot of unloving doctrines and teachings from their childhood, from their parents and so forth, all these unloving soul-based beliefs that are now inside of them. So the problem with it is that it's only ever going to be unloving and hurtful. Like, so that's what happens. You can work together in this way and you get to the point where you now have your wheels engaged in that positive direction. Yeah. And like I said, you can get to that point in the hells. You can have your wheels engaged in the same direction. And now you have the ability to grow much more rapidly. Everything you achieve together will be achieved much more rapidly yeah. because there's no opposite workings going on. There's no one opposing the other happening, right? So everything gets achieved more rapidly. There's also a combined force of your will that is greater than the sum of the two halves of the will. Do you yeah. follow? And the reason why is because the will is being cycled through the two of you and each, of, each thing that you imagine and create also inspires the imagination and creation of the other. And so it circulates 
In, and so it's far more powerful than just the sum of its two halves, right? Right. And so it has all these major benefits to you if you can get your will into that state. And this is also a part of the soulmate couple joining. The wills of a soulmate couple in the end will be identical. Yep. So, so if one person's will is resist and the other person's will is engage, or the other person, both wills are resist, resist, you know. You're, you're not really getting there. You're you? not going to get there, right? You're only going to get there if your wills both are collectively engaged in the same yeah. direction and engaged towards God's truth, love, and, and so the goal being at one moment with God, at one moment with each other, requires that you understand the exercise of your own will yeah. and then you understand the exercise of your will as a couple. Yeah, right? And at the moment, you might understand a little of your own will, but you're not getting the exercise of your will as a We're couple. We're not working as But, but I would look at, I would even... Uh, Put it a little more bluntly and say we're not really uh, really understanding the workings of our own will because if we genuinely understand sometimes them, you do sometimes you don't yeah, yeah but if we but if we <laughs> genuinely did on everything we wouldn't be doing what we're doing now would we if we fully understood uh, i don't know mm. see see getting to this state requires working through issues of trust right, of okay. the opposite gender yeah trust of your partner trust of their internal desires yeah. feel it, you need to be able to feel them to a degree does yeah. that make sense? If you can't feel them, you won't be able to trust them. Yeah. So, so it requires quite a lot. You know, it does require quite a lot of emotional work to to get to the point where you're accepting each other's emotion, you're accepting each other's will, you're recognizing when each other is out of harmony with love and in harmony with love, and you're recognizing when you're avoiding something, and you know when the other person's avoiding it, and you know when you're, you know, all of these different things. Obviously, take a bit of time to develop, right? Okay. But, but once you get to that point, after that, progress is much more simple yeah. when you're in a relationship. Before then, progress in a relationship is very, very difficult, yeah. right? Which is the reason why a lot of people recommend being alone. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with being alone is you don't address well, you these don't issues. With them. You don't get confronted with them. <laughs> you avoid right? Them. And this is why a lot of people who are alone are going to remain alone for many, many years or even hundreds of years sometimes yeah. because they're not willing to really confront these issues that come up when you're in a couple. Yeah. And so there's issues of trust, issues of understanding, issues of faith in each other, faith in, the, faith in what you feel from each other, not what they say. So I'm not saying you have to trust. Like when Mary says something to me that I know is a lie, I don't trust it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I trust my ability to feel yeah, her feelings. You follow? And she can trust, yeah. if she feels my feelings, she, can tr she knows she can trust those. Does that and make that, sense? Oh, I think that's a very different thing in our relationship at the moment. We're trying to trust each other's words and either they're untrustworthy or they're not, um, yeah, just because we're avoiding the feelings. Well, a lot of times they are also not a reflection of the truth, even yeah. if you believe they are. And that's part of the problem. But if you work together, if you can try to work together in harmony to discover what's the problem, yeah. rather than working opposite to each other, you'll find a great deal of emotional turmoil will disappear from your life as a couple. Yeah. And, and as I say, this can happen soon, not, not long time away. It can happen soon, but it requires the exercise of your will to do it. Yeah. And, you know, every time you enter argument state, it requires the exercise of one of you, yes. will, to say, hang on a sec, we're back in this argument state. Yeah. We're, now yeah. not, we're now not... You know, we're now not working in harmony anymore. Yep. Okay, this requires means that both of us are out. You know, one of us or both of us need to be more humble than what we're being. Let's That's let's relook at this situation again. Let's ask ourselves what God's truth is here, and let's work our way through. Right, what 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 in our will here caused us to get out of harmony again? What what was it emotionally? And then go away separately and work on those emotions, so that next time you come together, you're going to work more in harmony with each other. Yeah. Yeah. Because remember at the moment from uh, your will, you are emotionally invested in using your will to, in, get, away. to get away, to, to be in opposition to each other. Because by changing your will, you're going to confront 
Well, that's emotions really that, avoid. that you want to avoid. So it's not going to just be like, oh, right, we're friends it's now. You know? <laughs> oh, we do. It's emotional. Yeah. It's challenging. You're yeah. going to be challenged. You're going to feel like, no, I just would like, I preferred my addiction state. Yeah. You might even go back to being in the addiction. Then you'll feel how horribly painful that <laughs> is and go, well, well back to challenging this will-based desire to actually work together as a team. It's taken us probably six years to get to that state. Seriously. And you've been seriously working on it. Yeah, we've had more issues than the average yeah. person should should need to address because of the different issues with regard to identity and, you know, 2,000 years of existence and memories and a lot of other things yeah. which are very, very confronting from a psychological perspective to work through. But even that, if so, it has taken... We're both pretty sincere in getting through mm -hmm. stuff. So, so, so it's taken us quite a long time to get to that state. But now... That the state is reached, right? There, there's, like, honestly, before it was exhausting, yeah. right? For both of us, not, yeah. not just for one of us. And now our relationship doesn't exhaust us at all. Yeah. Absolutely. At all. Mm -hmm. It's not a source of drainage of our energy. Yeah. Does that make sense? For most people, you know, their relationship is the primary source of drainage of their energy. Yeah. Especially if they, if they completely avoid each other, then often, you know. <laughs> then it doesn't happen that way. Yeah. But. <laughs> no, I think it does, it does in a different way. You're not, you get on with your own things. Well, you can enter a state of denial, but in the yeah. end, the avoidance of each yeah. other is just a state of denial in yeah. the end. And in, you can enter a state of denial on anything and think you're happier, but the reality is you don't resolve any, <laughs> any issue sincerely. And you're certainly never going to be closer to God than you currently are yeah. if you do it. Whereas what I'm saying to you is that if you work through these issues and, and get closer together, you will also, as a side benefit, be working through issues getting closer to God because you, you will need God's help to get to that state. Yeah. You will. Because yeah. there are going to be times when you just feel like, I don't, uh, when's this state ever going to happen? <laughs> yeah. Right, it's never yeah, I've felt that many times. Yeah, I think yeah. Right? Feel that. And so you're going to need trust in God that God is good, that God created your you, the ability for you to be perfect individuals. God create have faith that God created your ability to have a perfect relationship, and you're going to have to have a lot of strong faith in that to even reach that point where you're actually joined in your will. Right, but it is worth doing. Yeah. It might take you another five years, mm. but it's worth doing. Yeah. You follow me? And you'll know it when you get there to that state where your will is joined. And once you realise that state, you go, oh, geez, this was like, <laughs> you know, it, it was all worth that. It was all, all yes. that effort was worth that. I, I feel that so passionately. It has been pretty full on yeah. six or seven years for me. And you guys have known me for yeah. the majority of that time. You've seen me go through a lot of stuff and feeling really bad and feeling really challenged. But getting to this point in our relationship, feels to me like every single day of that was worth it and I you know I still haven't forgiven myself probably for taking as long as I did but I really value the process and I know that there were parts of that process that I had to go through that were going to have to be challenging my facade letting go of that that was very 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 challenging for me and hmm. and um, yeah. but even through that whole time I was reminding Mary darling like you, you're being too hard on yourself here. You're blaming yourself for things that are not your fault. These are, these are emotions that are in you. They're just in you now. There's nothing you can do about it. They're in you. All you can do is choose to get them out of you. That's yeah. all you can choose to do. Yeah. Or leave them in you. Which one do you want? Yeah. Like at the end of the day, if you want to leave them in you, fair enough. <laughs> you, you will have to leave if you want them in you and you want to leave them there. That's fine. Um, I, but I'm going to hang around for years because <laughs> I don't want anybody else, you know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be in 100 years' time still waiting for you to, to desire to get them out of you if that's, if that's how long it takes. But at, at the end of the day, um, you've got to keep reminding each other that truth, yeah. that these emotions didn't get in you from some of your personal mistakes, although sometimes, you know, some yeah. of the mistakes you made added to mm. the problem. Yeah. But, but most of these emotions come from your childhood. And, and as a result, you need to be very compassionate and kind with yourself 
while at the same time not letting yourself get away with anything. Yeah, that's key. <laughs> Does hey? that make sense? <laughs> yeah. Or letting the other person get away with anything. Yeah. Talking a heap of nonsense to yourself. Yeah, yeah. You. yeah. So, so you need to be compassionate and kind in the sense that you, you, you love the fact that you're working way through the issue and you love the person working way through the issue. You be compassionate and kind and understanding about the problems they face, but you don't let them get away with not doing anything about it. Does that make yes. sense? Yes. Yeah. Because it's the not doing anything about it, which is your choice, and that in itself is going to create huge problems for your future yeah. if you continue with that choice. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Well, this is where the will has to be engaged. Yeah. And that's what I'm suggesting to you. And that's what I'm hearing in, you, in your encouragement to us is that we can do that. We can engage our will on those things now. Yes. Yeah. And those things then if we did that consistently, even intellectually to begin with, yes. it's yeah. going to make a massive It will difference. be intellectually to begin yeah, with. Correct. And then, then as you, you'll be triggered emotionally with different emotions yes. and you'll have to go away and feel them. Yeah. And then eventually as you feel them and release them, it'll become more of an emotional state. So into, our, our intellectual state of doing it began seven years ago, yeah. right? But our emotional state began about a year ago. <laughs> yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and perhaps also, babe, there was, uh, how can I say this? Within me... We talked about this the other day and within me there was the aspiration to have this will-based state yep. and that's what got me through dealing with all yeah, of the emotions that were opposing me being joining him in the will-based state of dealing well, i with feel there was all those four things that got you there like you had a state of humility you were willing to see you know, both, both of us have a state of humility. We're willing to see where we're wrong. We're willing to see what's going on, what we're doing. We're willing to be feel our emotions. At the beginning, you weren't feeling afraid. your emotions yeah. so much. But you did have a state of humility wanting to see what they were. Yeah. Right. There was also a big desire for truth. Yeah. you got to have a big desire, like a heart big desire. You have to know. Of truth, for and, truth. And yeah. a love of it. And a love of it. Like, that supersedes... Your love of almost everything else, yeah, 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 right. That you're going to need that to get through. You're going to also need to, you know, have a desire for God's love so strong yeah. that at the end it pulls you through any personal experience, no matter how traumatic it's going to be, yeah. right. And and then of course, you know, to have those things, you need the will to have those things. <laughs> so, and I feel Mary's had Mary and I both have those things. I had to do a lot of this work before I met Mary. Yeah. Like all the things I'm saying to you, I still had to work on by myself. I didn't have a person to cooperate who cooperated with me about it. I was by myself. I didn't have anyone pulling me down about it either because I lived by myself. Yeah. So, so I didn't have the negative pull down, but I also didn't have anybody building me up either. Does it mm. make sense? Yeah, yeah. Aside from God and my relationship with God pulling me through most of these things. So, so both of us in the end had to learn that. Yeah. Whether you learn that alone or together, you still got to learn it. Yeah. And and once you learn these particular things, now you have a great opportunity yeah. to grow. And if you can learn them together in your relationship, you've got a great opportunity to grow for the rest of your yeah. existence. Then, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, Mary, what you're talking about—that's the faith bit. That's sort of like for us at the moment, like where we are, it's having the faith in the process to start with and taking well, that first step. I think Pete probably. Jesus said it better. I think I continually wanted to honour the principles of truth, love, and humility. Yeah. Because to be honest, I didn't have a lot of faith that it was going to get you me to a good place. You didn't know going to work. It's not going to work. Uh, that was an emotion I had to go through as well of this feeling of there. I'm totally don't have any faith. But because Mary I just, initially had hardly any faith at all that it was worth doing. Yeah. yeah. I thought it's just going to end more. I was already rejected just from saying oh, I'm interested in divine truth. You know, everyone. In my life, just went, you're a loony, and rejected me basically, and so I felt like well, pursuing this even further is just going to lead to more rejection, yeah. more and harm, more, more heartache, alone. more alone. And I was obsessed with Jesus being killed again, and all this kind of stuff it was just oh me alone, alone, and hated. But I really, really loved the principle of humility, yeah. and I loved truth. It just, I just loved it. And I really, really, really wanted to be able to love. I, I really wanted to feel that I could love others. And that's probably the only things that really got me through even a feeling that I had no faith that it was going to get better. 
I just mm. clung and to I've, those concepts, I suppose. And I've had to develop the same concepts. And, yeah. and, and just because I've developed them before Mary, it didn't mean that I had to, didn't have to develop them. Yeah. 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 Uh, so I still had to develop exactly the same concepts. Yeah. So yes. every person who ever is going to become at one with God is going to have to develop those concepts. And by the way, any person who really wants a very loving relationship probably in the end is going to have to develop most of those concepts too. Because yeah. yeah. there's no way you can have a real close binding like will based relationship together that that's full of like you know friendship and love and sexual uh, intimacy and emotional intimacy w without having those particular yeah. qualities individually yeah, that you've yeah. developed individually yeah. so yeah. so that's why we'd like to recommend that you that you start to see at least even conceive of each other's <laughs> friends <laughs> real friends not real these friends. fake ones yeah. trying to be friends yeah. that are working together for the yeah. common goal of helping each other get to have an outcome which is that you're closer to god and closer to each other and you'll be able to help each other you know with those three principles that we talked about humility truth and love like for ello there's a lot there's a stronger love of truth at the moment in you than there is in peace mm -hmm. uh, in an absolute in god's truth but you can help him to yeah. confront the emotions that make him afraid of truth and to develop that love himself and that will draw you both yeah through it's inspiring things. in itself yeah. 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 yeah yeah but you don't have to see it as a comp competition either no. pete like just because someone like like for me if mary was in a better state than myself i'd be quite happy about it to be frank because <laughs> <laughs> i've had a lot of struggle trying to get you know, the answers to the questions that i've had to work through myself if i had somebody else who could just say things to me i would have found it much easier in some cases to work through different emotions and i have found it so um yeah so you know i would i would it doesn't worry me which one of us is ahead of the other all that i care about is that one of us is so that, <laughs> so that we can keep growing right and i had yeah. a lot of feelings of feeling competition with jesus when we met again and that was relating to my worth feeling like i wasn't uh, Not good enough. i wasn't good enough and as I worked through those issues, now I could like argue with him yesterday when he said it was harder to have a soulmate who's in a higher condition of love because I feel it is such a gift, such a gift, you yeah. know, and I do value and appreciate him for that now. But it's so even the sense of competition, it's just an injury to work yeah. through. There's yeah. challenges because yeah. when you're in a worse condition, you, you don't see the benefits of the better condition. Mm -hmm. You follow me? So there are, it is sometimes more difficult for the person in the worst condition with some issues to accept certain things. And it's, and it's harder to accept them because you're in the worst condition that defines those conditions, mm. the, the worst place, you see. But, but in the end, if you're both working cooperatively, you'll even get through that. Yeah. You yeah. Know? So, <laughs> yeah. So that's what we'd like to recommend. Thanks, you guys. <laughs> Yeah, so hopefully you've enjoyed today's discussion. It's been yeah. And we'll have, uh, there's still, like we said, there's quite, a, we've probably <laughs> we covered about half, half of what we had of what we'd like to yeah. cover with you. Yeah. So yeah. perhaps we can get together another time That'd be awesome. Awesome. and cover the other half when you feel ready and up to it. Well, hopefully I'll know what the issue is <laughs> so you can continue the conversation. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And, but yeah, my, my, just focus on that homework, working awesome. together as friends on issues rather than always working opposite or, or pulling down or yeah. destroying the trust that builds in a relationship if you work as friends. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you both so much for having this discussion with yeah. us. You know that we love you so much, both of you. Yeah. And I just feel it has the potential to help a lot of other sincere mm. people out there. And so you're very brave and kind to put it on film. Yeah, yeah. I think we've had, like, I'm not sure if you yeah. talked about this discussion like a few months ago or a year ago, how we would have behaved. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. been a process, I think, to even just be open to it all hearing yeah it always is and and so. honestly i feel that uh, you know a lot of the feedback we give at the time we give it people are probably you know not as ready as they believe themselves to be to receive it but we feel that you guys are entering a new phase of your life in the sense that you you're, you're going to have more time together you've got the ability to work through these issues you've got uh, the ability to grow quite substantially if you give yourself the time and the energy to do so yeah. and and in the past, a lot of your time has been drained by external, external life. Mm -hmm. You know, now you have a great opportunity to rejig your what mm -hmm. I would classify as your soul environment. Yeah. 
in so that your soul becomes the focus of your soul environment mm -hmm. rather than having everything else the focus of your environment and uh, and and your soul being neglected yeah. and so what we'd like to see is is you know we're very interested to see <laughs> what's going to happen for you over the coming years yeah. um, in terms of the changes that you're now making and and also your growing openness uh, towards God and growing openness towards truth exactly. and the effect that that's going to have on both on yourselves but also on what you choose to create. Yeah, yeah. that'd be awesome. So we're looking forward to watching your life unfold. We'll have to do a series of interviews at Ella and Pete. <laughs> Ella and Pete, the Chronicles. <laughs> we did a little home Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so, guys. Go back and see the beginning of yeah. where it started. I wish sometimes I had a five-minute video of you two when we first met you. Yeah. <laughs> I do too. I do too. Because Ella, when we come in, we were coming in. was I? But still with the same underlying feelings about you. Yourself, exactly. but just with a different cover on them. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. definitely. No, it would have been, it would have been. It's sometimes it's interesting, isn't it, to reflect back. It, the beauty of reflecting back is that you get to see that you have made progress, right? And and that should give you some faith too. Yeah, that for further progress is also possible. It took mm. us a while to recognise the progress, <laughs> to be honest. Well, people around you see it. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks anyway, thanks for your time today, guys. guys. And, uh, and, and we'll have another opportunity at a later stage to have another discussion with you. And thanks very much for our recorders in the room. Thank They're you. patiently waiting for us to finish our <laughs> conversation. <laughs> yeah, we'd like to say see you later to the guys uh, uh, as, but that have been listening to the conversation and hopefully it's benefited you in, in, the, in the analysis of your own relationship. Thanks for your time. Mm -hmm.